How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be doing a video in response to Lindy Beige, who is a YouTuber I've been watching for a very long time. He makes excellent videos, uh, shares my love of history, penannular brooches, and uh, the color beige. But I have to take issue with one of his videos. It's a much older video uh, concerning horse archery, but I've been meaning to make this video on it for a while and just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, he deals with history starting about the Bronze Age, going all the way up till I believe the Thirty Years' War. Uh, you'd have to ask him exactly where his area of interest is. But mine has some overlap with his. Uh, I would say earliest I'm interested in it is late 15th century, right when uh, pistols and muskets, uh, aquebuses, uh, start to come into uh, use and going all the way up uh, through the Thirty Years' War till all the way up to probably about World War I is when I start losing interest again. But the is issue of horse archery interests me because it lines up with my favorite troops, which are uh, cavalry, uh, specifically pistoliers, uh, carbineers, and uh, cuirassiers, who uh, all fit uh, and dragoons, who all fit a similar role and they fit a similar purpose to horse archers. Now in his video he seems to downplay the use of horse archers in the medieval setting, but I think he gets their use wrong. Uh, in his video he says, well they're not very good for defending uh, positions, they're not very good for attacking fortified positions, but that's not really what they were used for. No one would consider them to be used for. He also says that they wouldn't be very good for attacking heavy infantry, which I don't believe is true at all. That's probably actually what they would be used for. And the role they fit is similar to uh, a pistolier or a, a cuirassier. Same thing basically, uh, just different names. During that era there was a lot of different names for pretty much the same thing. And they would have been armed with two of these. This is actually a uh, Harper's Ferry, a much later, later gun. I do have a, a heavy Dragoon pistol on order, but we're going to go ahead and pretend that this is a better pistol than it actually is. And they would be armed with two pistols, much longer more than likely, uh, more than likely depending on the country, and it would have been wheel lock. Uh, but they would ride in, uh, in early tactics it would be to do a uh, carousel sort of thing. They would actually ride around, fire off both pistols, and the idea was to open up a gap in the um, probably pike lines in order for them to charge in as heavy cavalry. They wouldn't just be firing off their guns, okay, then go back and reload. They would only do that if they could not disrupt the enemy lines enough to run in in a charge. Later on, they abandoned that tactic, and that what they would actually do is they would run in I believe it was about 20 yards, fire first their first pistol, either drop it on a lanyard or holster it, draw their next one, fire that at a very close range, and then draw their sword and continue the charging, which was most must have been the most terrifying thing you could ever ask your soldiers to do, because even if you had not disrupted the line, you were already dedicated to the charge, so you're going to die. Um, but it served it absolutely... Uh, a, integral role, uh, and it did not get taken over really until Gustavus Adolphus uh, adopted artillery in the Thirty Years' War. Instead of using cavalry so much as it had been before, he used artillery to disrupt the lines. But before that, uh, you actually had troops uh, called pistoliers or cuirassiers, although that name goes on to mean a number of different things who would wear breastplates in full armor, full like knightly armor. Uh, the breastplates would be a little, uh, rated to take a uh, musket round directly to the chest. Their backplates would be rated to uh, take a pistol round directly to the chest. And their entire point was to run in, disrupt the lines, and then charge in as heavy cavalry. Now what they could also do is dismount and walk in as heavy infantry. Or, uh, with the case of uh, carbineers, they could actually uh, fill the role of a musketeer. But, the same is true with horse archers. You would not use them to just twang their bows uh, into the uh, heavy infantry. You would have them do that until they could disrupt the infantry enough to move in. Now, he 
brings up the point that uh, archery was not as effective as a lot of people think it is. And he's correct, he knows quite a bit about archery, but neither were these. Uh, not as really um, a consequence of them being black powder pistols. They were powerful, potentially accurate, but not on horseback, not when you're using um, smoothbore guns, and not when you're um, scared as hell. So when you're firing off these rounds, it would literally be from like 10 feet away, and you would not be aiming for individuals, you would be aiming for the crowd. These were not terribly effective. The entire point of these were to disrupt the enemy, uh, cause enough chaos to be able to make the charge effective against the pikes. And more than likely, the archers, who were in full armor, in most cases in terms of heavy horse archery, uh, full armor and uh, carrying swords and sometimes even shields uh, would just disrupt the enemy enough to ride in and that seems to be the case and historically what they would do. Light, uh, our light archers, light horse archers normally traveled with heavy horse archers or heavy, uh, heavy cavalry as well so they would disrupt enough for them to run in. Uh, also you could just make this gap move out of the way for other uh, units falling in behind you to take uh, command of whatever gap you've uh, created. So I think uh, Lindy Beige actually misrepresents how they were used and uh, why they were effective. Another reason they were quite effective was that yes they were horse archers but they were also heavy cavalry and heavy infantry. They could dismount uh, later on you had the Dragoons, uh, which had pistols, had carbines, or uh, actually a uh, full musket sometimes, who would just get off their horse and walk in as infantry. You could also have them do that. They were very versatile troops, which is why they were so effective. They could run to an area, they were very mobile, dismount, walk in, or charge in as cavalry. So they're role was extremely important. Before the Thirty Years' War, in fact, vast portions of uh, armies were actually made up of cavalry, uh, specifically for this point, because you couldn't really harass or break up a pike line with anything else. Uh, he's actually done a video on pikes uh, before, which I found very interesting, and you couldn't really go pike to pike, you couldn't really go normal cavalry to uh, pike, even heavy cavalry, uh, you had no way to break up these pikes except for the pistoliers, which filled the same role as uh, heavy horse archers or horse archers. It was to break up these polearm blocks. And you couldn't really do that until Gustavus Adolphus decided to hunk large chunks of lead at them uh, using artillery. But there was nothing that could do that before that except for the ranged cavalry. So that's kind of my take on this. He's welcome to disagree with me. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll even see this because YouTube doesn't let me uh, post responses anymore. But the basic uh, thing I want to say here is I think he, despite being very well educated on the subject, I think he simply miss. <sighs> He didn't quite under he doesn't quite understand what they were used for I think I uh, if they weren't able to simply charge in as heavy cavalry his assessment would be correct but that's not how they were used they didn't just twang their bows just as pistoliers didn't just fire off their pistols and be done with it they then then took advantage of the opening created by the chaos of you know an arrow sticking through your dude's eye uh, to charge in and actually break up the lines. So if you don't break up the lines, if you don't break up the pike walls or the halibrids or whatever they used earlier on, uh, you really can't do much to a military uh, unit unless you're able to break them up. And if you create enough chaos, you can actually route them with very few casualties, which would probably be the main goal. It's, it's not to completely wipe out a unit, or in his example, the heavy infantry standing on the hill, it's a, to create enough chaos to rout them and drive them off that hill. So that's how they were used. Yes, they could not be used as a defensive uh, unit. No, they couldn't take fortifications, but that's not what they were for. 
They could dismount their horses, they could walk in as heavy infantry or light infantry and take the fortification that way, uh, and they could get there faster than other troops and uh, take it uh, by surprise, possibly. But, uh, yes, as simply horse archers, they are not going to be able to take that fortification. Uh, but that's not how they were used. So that's uh, basically my little video here. Um, disagree with me if you like. <laughs>